Open your Bibles up to Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to continue the core series that we've been in for a few weeks where Pastor Sean is taking a look and, and bringing some clarification and some definition to who we are as a church and what Echo Church will represent to our community and with our influence all around the world. And uh, part one, uh, Pastor Sean, we talked about the, the core values of being rooted and fruited. And then the second, being submitted and committed. The third, being a church that is passionate and praising. And this week, I'm really honored to be able to bring this message, and we're going to start our fourth core value that is equipped and empowered. And I'm going to talk to you guys about what it means to be equipped today. And with all of these core values, and each of them, rooted and fruited, submitted, committed, passionate, praising, equipped, and empowered, with all of them, there it's a twofold value. There's an inner work, and then there's an outer work. You cannot be fruited outwardly unless first you have good roots dug in your personal life and in your walk with the Holy Spirit. And, and you cannot uh, be committed to something that you haven't first submitted to. You cannot praise something that you're not passionate about. And so today I want to talk about the, the core value of being equipped. Because I believe that we have in our culture today a church, not just Echo Church, but like the, the large scale, the capital C church, if you will. We have a church in our culture today that desires to see an empowering take place from the Holy Spirit, but doesn't want to lean into the equipping. Uh, like we want to see some refining take place, like nice jewelry, but we don't want to go through the process of being refined. We want to have all of the glamour and we want to have all of the, the, the greatness, but we don't want to go through the fire. And what's interesting is to get uh, anointing oil, that olive first has to go through an incredible pressing process where it has to be smashed and it has to be churned and it has to be uh, squished and, and ground into nothing. The olive has to go through this process before it can become a pure oil. And it's it, interesting to me because, uh, like I said, in the church today, we want to pursue and we want to see the empowering. We want to see movements of God in our churches, but we don't want to go through the process of being equipped so that we can be those movements of God. It's kind of like a, a, a 16-year-old, and I love teenagers. Part of my job here at the church is to oversee our youth ministry, and I have been passionate about young adults for a long time. And I love the, the, the age of a 16-year-old and the mindset of a 16-year-old because it's at one of those turning points, and it's at one of, those, uh, one of those thresholds where it's a rite of passage where you get to get a driver's license. And every 16-year-old wants to have the freedom of the open road. They want to have the freedom of a driver's license but very few enjoy the process of learning how to drive. And I remember myself when I was 16 and my parents were teaching me to drive. And uh, one of the things that was important for me was I wanted to learn how to drive a stick shift, uh, a manual transmission. And I was driving through a grocery store parking lot in this little two-door hatchback Ford Festiva that my parents owned. It's like the smallest... We actually called it a roller skate. And this is tiny little car, a little four speed. And I was riding in the car with my stepmom, and she was giving me instruction as I was driving. And that's frustrating sometimes. It's frustrating when, and I do this to my wife all the time, so I'm sorry, babe, that I do this to you. But I, I, I do it too. It's, it's frustrating when you're trying to do something like drive a car with somebody giving you instruction the whole time that you're doing it. But I remember this particular time we were driving in this Ford Festiva and we were close to the entrance of this grocery store, you know, in the little cross, close to the crosswalk area. And my stepmom began to tell me, slow down. JR, slow down. JR, slow down. JR, slow down. And I started to get really nervous and I turned and I looked at her and I said, I am. And I came within inches of hitting this elderly lady with her shopping cart 
when it dawned on me, I looked down at the floorboard, and at the, the whole time that I thought that I was pressing in on the brake pedal, I was pressing in on the clutch. And I was so embarrassed and mortified that I almost ran over this old lady. But it's interesting because nobody wants to go through the equipping process to be prepared for what lies at the end of it. We want to see the Holy Spirit move. We want to see power in our churches. But we don't want to go through the process of becoming equipped so that we can be that hope of glory. The Bible doesn't say that we're supposed to just sit here and that God is going to bring the hope of glory down upon us. The Bible says that you are the hope of glory. And so we have to go through this equipping process. And so we'll go to Ephesians 4, starting in verse 10. Uh, the scripture says this, He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping, this is the good part, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. It goes on, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried above, about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I mean, there is, there's a lot of... A, a, a lot of instruction here. There's a lot of good meat here. But I just want to pull out a couple different things from this scripture. One, it says that, that the Holy Spirit appoints some to fulfill the role of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Some he chooses to serve in these roles, in these anointings of leadership. And some he sets apart for these purposes and he sets them apart, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He sets them apart for the equipping of the saints. And we live in a world today where everybody is so enamored and everybody is so fascinated by leadership and by uh, opportunities to have responsibility and by titles and by roles. And even myself, when I first began to study these scriptures and began to learn about the different offices and the different anointings that the Holy Spirit puts on some that he calls to serve in these roles, I was so enamored with the different roles and the different responsibilities and the different levels of leadership that I completely missed the purpose of these positions, the purpose of these leadership roles in the church. The purpose of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers is for the equipping of the saints. And so today, I'm not going to look at any of these roles. I just want to look at the saints. I want to look today at the role of the saints because the vast majority of the church today, hello, turn to your neighbor and you can say, hello, saint. Because that is the vast majority of the church. Some, a few he calls to serve in leadership positions. To equip the church is another word for saints. The church, the purpose of the leadership of the church. My job as a pastor of Echo Church is to equip you to do the work of ministry. My job is not to do the work of ministry. My job is to equip the saints, to equip the church for the work of ministry. And then later on at the, at the end in verse 16, it says, for the edifying of itself. It causes growth of the body. This equipping of the saints causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And so today I want to talk to you about this. Saints are equipped 
for the work of ministry. That means the work of ministry can't be done if the saints aren't equipped. But saints are also equipped for the edifying of the body of Christ. And it's easy, you do a little reverse psychology to just switch this around. If, if saints in the church aren't equipped, if we fail at this instruction from the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 4, if the church fails, if the leadership of the church fails to equip saints, then what does that mean? That means the work of ministry can't be completed. And I believe that the reason why church attendance in our culture, in the Northwestern Christian culture, why church attendance, the average church size in our culture staggers between 75 and 100 people. The average church size. And this includes, these statistics includes huge mega churches of 20, 30, 50,000 people. It includes the biggest of churches, but because of how many churches in our society, in our culture, see 15, 20 people on a good Sunday. The average size church in our culture is between 75 and 100 people on Sunday morning. And this is because, I believe this is because you have churches where saints aren't being equipped. So the work of ministry can't be done. You have pastors who are slaving away, working diligently, pouring their hearts and their lives into serving their communities when our role as the leaders, our role as the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, our role as the leaders of the church is to equip the church for the work of ministry. But you have so many leaders who are are working tirelessly to do the work of ministry, and that's not how we're called to accomplish. The second is the body of Christ can't be edified. The work of ministry can't be done. The body of Christ can't be edified if the saints aren't equipped to do the work. There's a couple overall issues that I want to talk about today. And, And the first is that saints in the church aren't being equipped. Like I said, 75 to 100 people, that is, that is a, a, a horrible average when you see even Echo Church. Right now, we, we run between 280, 300 people. The average church in our culture, 75 to 100. And the problem is, the first thing that I want to talk about is, is the saints aren't being equipped. Equip is a word that, that, that means to prepare and supply with the necessary tools for a particular purpose. To prepare you, there's training involved in being equipped. When I worked as a security guard for about seven years, I worked in in hospital security, and when I got this job as a security guard, I had to go through training in order to do that job. Because if I just went into a situation where I had an altercation with somebody who was high on some kind of drug or intoxicated in our ER and they were being combative, these are things that happened on a regular basis, and they were being combative and fighting and, and, and abusing the hospital staff, it was my job to come in and restrain them and stop them from harming the hospital staff or harming themselves. And there was training involved in that. I had to learn how to physically restrain somebody and not hurt them and not allow them to hurt me. There was training involved in that. There was training involved for the the taser that I had to carry. There was training involved for the handcuffs and the restraints that we had to use in different situations. In most of your fields where you work, you had to go through some level of training so you could learn the trade. And in churches today, in in Echo Church, we have awesome opportunities like Echo Groups for you to join and you to get involved and you to be discipled in your Christian walk and you to be discipled and and, and mentored in your your daily Christian life. And we have awesome opportunities where we have our discipleship pastor, Pastor Tim, who teaches Christianity 101 to teach you fundamentals. And we have Echo You, uh, a, a sweet lady, Mindy Barrett, teaches we have a a Facebook page that you can follow and you can watch and learn through different video 
uh, seminars that she's done of how to be able to study your Bible and really dissect God's word and apply it to your life. So many Christians I hear over, over the years, and I have lived in this season myself, so many Christians, we read God's word and we have no idea how to apply it to our lives. We don't really know what it means. We're reading it like a novel when this is an instruction manual for your life. There's training involved. And then secondly, we have to supply the necessary tools. To equip somebody, to be equipped means you have to be trained and you have to be given the necessary tools. And the dilemma that we have in the church today is the saints aren't being equipped. And the church in our culture, like I said, is, is in a weakened state and has been for years because the church as a whole, not this church, I love Pastor Sean says that, I'm not talking to you, not this church, but the church as a whole relies on its leaders to do the work of ministry. And we choose churches as, as church attenders, we choose churches based off of how the church provides for me and my family. I remember my, my good friend, Cody Krug, who is one of our missionary families that we support that serves on the Yankton Sioux Tribe in South Dakota. And Cody and I had a, a really interesting conversation once when uh, we went through some transition here at Echo Church and some leadership left and, and we had uh, some people leave the church. And I had this conversation with Cody and we began to uh, just kind of learn together and grow together in this. And he made a comment to me once about how weird it is to him that somebody would choose a church to attend based on rather not they liked the music. <laughs> and I laughed. I'm like, bro, like that's one of the main reasons why people choose churches is do they like the music? And we, and we pick churches. And if I'm picking on you today, if I'm stepping on your toes, sorry, but I'm not sorry. Because this is truth today. And yet I hope you didn't come in here to hear some fuzzy word that makes you feel awesome about yourself. I want you to be encouraged. There's good news here for you. But, there, but there's also going to be some challenge to it as well. And maybe this was part of why you chose Echo Church. Because I think the guy who leads our worship and our worship team... I think they do a pretty good job, right? <laughs> That's me. But it's interesting how we choose church in our culture because there's so many different options. Different areas of the world, they don't have options like that. You're lucky to have a Bible teaching church in your town in certain areas of the world today. Today, today, people are hungry for God's word and they're hungry for the assembly of believers but it, again, in our culture, we live in this, in this spoiled Christian culture where you can go through Pleasant Hill, and I think there's somewhere around like 14 different churches in Pleasant Hill alone. And this is only a community of like 9,000 people. And so we pick our church based off of how the church will provide for our family. And what's upsetting about this is that means that as soon as a church changes something, if, if next week we completely changed up the methods that we use if we completely changed up how we do our worship services here. If Pastor Sean completely changed up his preaching style, if we completely reformatted our children's ministry, we could potentially see a group of people decide that they don't really get fed the same way at Echo Church anymore, and they would leave and go look for another church. Because we're not sitting and submitting to the leadership of the church we're not submitting to the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, that, that leadership anointing that God puts over the church so that we can be equipped for the work of ministry. We're attending a church because of how it provides for our family. Therefore, saints today in our church aren't being equipped. And listen, today I want to inform you, if you're new to Echo Church, welcome to Echo Church. And we take this stuff seriously. We are a church that will be rooted and fruited. We'll be rooted in God's word and the fruits of the Holy Spirit will birth and will come forth out of our individual lives. Not just the life of the church, but our individual lives. 
men and women in the church in their workplaces, the fruit of the Holy Spirit will impact their workplaces. The fruit of the Holy Spirit will impact your families. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, young, young, young students and kids, it will impact your schools because we will be rooted in God's word. And God's word's often challenging. We'll submit and be committed to the vision that God has for this church. We're, we'll be a passionate people that will praise God with abandon. So we'll sing, we'll dance, however, however the Holy Spirit leads, we'll, we'll praise and give glory to God. And we will be a church that equips the saints. We are a church that equips the saints for the work of ministry. And this has taken, this has taken some time. Echo Church has been through a season of transition. We went through it for a few years. And when I first came, I, I loved this church. My wife and I, we were just immediately connected to this church, and we felt immediately drawn here by the Holy Spirit. But when we first came, it was a really awesome experience to be a part of. And it still is. It's still an awesome thing to be a part of. But what the Holy Spirit has done in the heart of our church and in the DNA of our church is it's, the Holy Spirit has transitioned us from being about the experience to be about discipleship. Discipleship, which is a word that means equipping, will be no longer about the experience and the luster and the glamour of awesome worship experiences and awesome outreach events, and, and, and all the things that, we, that we've accomplished as a church. We still do awesome things. I'm not saying that it's not amazing and it's not awesome to be a part of, but it's not about the awesomeness anymore. It's about discipleship. It is about the equipping of the saints to do the work of ministry. Because if all the church is, and, and there's so many churches, and we have, there's so many churches that fall into this, if all the church is is an opportunity for you to come have a spiritual experience, then you as the life and the, and the blood and the body of Christ are not doing the work of Jesus in your world. And church is not about these four walls. Church is not about coming here for an experience. Church on Sunday mornings is about coming here to be equipped, to rally together, to be lifted up, to be prepared, to be edified, to be encouraged, to be challenged, and then to go do and be the church in your community, in your workplace, in your home. But when a church exists solely to provide an awesome worship experience inside the four walls... And we're not equipping people, the work of ministry is not done. And for so long, for so long, church has been about I and me and not about us and we. And it's got to come to a point. And not just Echo Church, like I said, we have been on an awesome road of having our DNA completely changed as a church. And what I'm sharing today, I'm not sharing to try to get you to become something and to push the church to become something. What I'm sharing today is to explain to you one, one point, one core value of who we are as a church. And if you're not submitted to that, if you're not immersed in that, then get on board because God is working through this church. God is working through his church. But it cannot any longer be about I and, and, and me because as the church, the Bible literally calls us a body. So the body has to function together. So just because, just because one person might be running on all eight cylinders, if, if you're not, and I'm not picking on you, I'm just, you know, giving a contrast, but if you're not, then the body isn't functioning effectively. It's not about a small group of people. There's this saying in the church 
again, the, the church, not Echo Church, but it's been true for Echo Church. It's not anymore. Praise God. But there's this saying that 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. So 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And that's not an effective body. If my left arm just decides to not work anymore, my body becomes much less effective. And we're called to be the body of Christ. The second thing is, the first is the saints aren't being equipped in the church. The second thing is, we have the saints who are resistant to equipping. So first, the saints aren't being equipped, and that may be because of of poor leadership, that may be because of misguided vision, a whole slew of things. But the the role from the leadership to the church, the saints aren't being equipped. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the saints being resistant to equipping. And I want to say this. God put this, this sentence in my heart as I was preparing this that everybody wants to be Moses. Think about that. I'm going to say it again. Everybody wants to be Moses. And here's what I mean. I'm, I'm asked from time to time, friends of mine, uh, sometimes people within the church, most of the time people from outside of the church that, I, that I'm friends with, that I have relationships with, they'll ask me questions like, JR, when are you going to pastor your own church? And truthfully, I'm in, I'm in my 30s now. I'm 33 years old. I've been doing pastoral ministry for 11 years. And it's very few people in, in my position who come into associate pastor roles. Very few people stay in that position for any length of time because their goal is to reach the next thing. And we have seminaries and we have Bible colleges that are sending students, sending young men, young women out into the world. And so many of them, they want to go and they want to, and they want to seek the, the senior pastor job. They want to pastor their own church. They want to start their own church. And they want to be at that pinnacle that they see as the, the top tier of leadership. And I have people ask me from time to time, Jerry, when are you going to start your own church? And that sets into that same mindset that everybody wants to be Moses. And, and, and the truth for me is I have no desire. I have no desire to, to pastor my own church. I have no desire to have Pastor Son's job. No thank you. I don't want that job. I don't feel like I'm equipped for that job. I don't feel like I'm called to that job. And I love this scripture so much, and, and I'm going to make this statement again. Everybody wants to be Moses. So turn your Bibles to Exodus 17. We're going to take a look at at this scripture real quick. Exodus 17, starting in verse 9. It says, And Moses said to Joshua, Come choose some men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. Moses' job is hard. It may look like all Moses has to do is just hold his arms up for a duration of time so that Israel can win this battle. But what we don't understand in just reading this scripture is the weight that Moses carried on his shoulders. He was the spiritual leader of Israel. So he had a heavy weight just to hold his arms up, took an enormous amount of strength. It says, but Moses' hands became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And this is my point that we're making right now in this, the, the saints 
so many are, are resistant to the equipping. And maybe this is you. Maybe this is you. And if this is you, I just want you to sit and I just want you to think about this. And I want you to really seek the spirit to, to ask the question, why we operate like this? Because I have before. Why do we operate in this resistance to be equipped? And I believe that the main point is, is we don't want to accept the role of the saints. Again, because we want to pursue that next big thing. And we see apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And this is so awesome. And, and so many in the church want to seek out which of, of these anointings and which of, of these giftings that, that they relate to. When the scripture literally says that he calls some. He calls some. The vast majority of the body are the Israelites that are, that are down fighting the fight against Amalek. They're, they're, they're fighting the work against the enemy. They're doing the work of ministry. But everybody wants to be Moses. Everybody wants to have that, that, that position of leadership. Everybody wants to have that role of responsibility. As if it's, as if it's appealing, as if it's so luxurious there's it, it's it's such a misguided perception but everybody wants to be Moses I want to, you to understand that without Aaron and her without Joshua the Israelite army was toast for many and, and this may be you you feel God's calling on your life you know he has a higher purpose for your life but you're so focused on the big chair at the head of the table while the Holy Spirit is trying to equip you to be one who holds up somebody else's arms. And that's where I, that's where I really feel like God is, has got us called me. The first time I began to study this relationship between Aaron and her and Moses, God's calling on my life made sense to me. I have no desire, nor do I feel called to pastor my own church, but God has called me to a position of leadership where I hold up somebody's arms. God has called me to serve on a team, to equip saints for the work of ministry. It says he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and then he calls the saints for the work of ministry. I want you to understand today that we are a church where saints rise up to their calling. We are a church where the body is equipped. And through the equipping, the body will be empowered by the Holy Spirit for the work of ministry. It is a calling that God has given this church. Therefore, it is a calling that God has given you. We have to be willing to sit under equipping. The body of Christ has got to stop accepting mediocrity. We've got to stop accepting this idea. And we've got to stop expecting the leadership of the church to provide for our family. And you have to understand it is your responsibility, husbands, to provide for your family. Man, when a dad comes to me and tells me that their kid just hasn't been getting fed here, so they're going to go look for another church, it is not the role of the church to feed your kid. That's your job. I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's your job. The purpose of the church is to equip you in how to do that. But we're so expectant and we're so complacent with just sitting back and allowing other people to take on that responsibility that we don't step up to it ourselves. Echo Church, this local body, Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus. But this letter, Ephesians 4, this letter to the church in Ephesus was written to the local church. This is a letter, this is instruction for you and I. And the body can't be united. The body can't be edified without saints being equipped for the work of ministry. The church has got to stop being a consumer 
atmosphere where we join together expectant of awesome experiences. And we become committed to the equipping of the Holy Spirit. We become committed to allowing God to do his work within us, to equip us for his calling on our lives and on the life of our church so that we can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to transform our homes, to transform our communities. We've got to be equipped for the work of ministry so that God's will can be done through his bride, through the body of Christ.